What would the perfect offseason look like for the Seattle Mariners? Find out more in today's video. As you can tell, we're not in our usual filming spot, but we're going to make it work anyway. So I had asked on my X account, what do you guys think what the perfect offseason would be for the Seattle Mariners? So basically, I'm going to review some of those and give you guys my opinion on what the perfect offseason would be. And there is definitely one of your comments that stood out and is definitely the perfect offseason in my eyes. But let's start with the first one. So the first offseason plan is from my guy D-Train. He said, trade Harry Ford and Gabriel Gonzalez for Nolan Jones, trade Brian Wu for Randy Rosarena, sign Reese Hoskins, and then sign Manea for the fifth starter. So I'm going to work from the bottom up with this one. So I know a lot of people probably might not know who Sean Manea is. He's a left-handed pitcher for the San Francisco Giants. Last season, he was 7-6 and six in 117 innings thrown with a 4.44 ERA and 128 strikeouts. So to me, I think he would have a perfect role in our fifth spot, at least until Robbie Ray comes back, hopefully this coming summer. And it also gives us a lefty in our starting rotation, which we don't have unless Robbie Ray or was Marco Gonzalez in our rotation. So I like that first part. So the next thing he had said was sign Reese Hoskins, which I also don't mind. Hoskins would be more of a DH for us than he would be a first baseman because I think Ty France will get most of the playing time over there. And a firm reason I believe he's going to be playing more first base is because I don't think Ty France fits well in a DH spot. So I don't mind the Hoskins signing at all. The next piece was trade Wu for Randy Rosarena. So there's kind of two things with this that I could see two opinions on. The first one being is maybe you're going to have to give up more than just Wu for Randy, which obviously that would be kind of perfect just to do a one-for-one one deal with them. But I think the Rays see more of a return when they're if they're going to be giving away Randy. Which again, I know a lot of you may have a problem with because you see you can get more with Miller and you like Brian Wu's arsenal a lot better. So I can see that kind of going either way, whether it's Miller or Wu for Randy or Rosarena, but I expect them to want a prospect as well. And the most interesting one on this one is trading for Nolan Jones. So there's kind of two things that may be a little off about this is Nolan Jones is probably very untouchable for the Rockies because he's probably their best player. So in their eyes, in order to actually get give him up, they'd have to see a lot in return in terms of having actual MLB ready players. While I'm sure they would want one or two prospects, I'm sure they would want a guy that they can put in their starting lineup from day one. But I think Nolan Jones would be a good lefty bat as well as a filling a hole in our outfield spot. So to me, I'm going to give this offseason plan an A-. I'm going to give it an A- only because, yes, it does fill three of our big holes that we have. Just personally, I would rather see Wu and Miller throwing in our rotation than just Sean Manea. So that's the only reason I'm going to give this an A-, but I do like the idea. So these next two I'm going to be throwing up on screen are very similar, so I put them together. The first one says, I just really want a Rosarena. I think it would be worth Miller and maybe a prospect or two. And the second one says, Jorge Soler, a Rosarena for Miller, and some starting pitching depth. So this kind of goes back to what I just said. If you want to acquire Randy or Rose Rainier, you're going to have to give up more than just Miller or Wu. You're definitely going to have to throw in a prospect or two in that trade. And then with the second one, signing Jorge Soler as well as trading for Randy Rose Rainier and some starting pitching, I think that could definitely help out, but I think it is definitely missing something. So getting Soler obviously would put him in the DH spot and then Randy would be playing left. But while there are some mixed opinions on this, I think Canzone could possibly be an everyday starter, but then again, you want someone out there that is almost guaranteed to do something very good for us. I know that can be de very debatable on whether Dom is ready to play every day or not, but I think in terms of filling an outfield spot, a DH spot, and then maybe one infield spot at third base, I would definitely give Dom an everyday shot to play out there. So I'm going to give this offseason plan a B, only because I do like some of them, but I think it's missing a good amount. I think it fills some pretty important holes, but there's still some holes that need to be fixed. So that's why I'm going to give these a B. So this next one's for my guy Jason over on X. He said, a Rosarena, Snell, or a comparable starting pitcher. One more bullpen arm wouldn't hurt. A backup catcher if we don't re-sign Murphy, which we didn't re-sign him. That was news yesterday. Willing to deal Wu, Ray, Cabby, and Haggerty. Preferably Cabby. Also willing to deal with some minor leaguers and draft picks if needed. So I do like this. I think this is definitely something the Mariners could do. I definitely agree with the one more bullpen arm. This might be a hot take, but I personally think a role this Chapman could be definitely someone in the back of our bullpen that could be successful in Seattle. And we obviously didn't re-sign Tom Murphy at this point, so that's kind of out of the question. And we're definitely just going to rock with Sebi Zavala. So in terms of the willing to deal part, I think dealing Wu and Ray would be way too much. Yes, you'd be getting a guy like Snell if this were to happen, but I think it's got to be either one or the other because the whole purpose is to kind of fill that hole that we would have if we got rid of Brian Wu or Bryce Miller. So acquiring Snell would allow them to go out and trade guys like Wu. I think if they were to get rid of both of them, it really wouldn't be beneficial. In terms of Cabby or Haggerty, I would rather keep Cabby because I think he's more of a threat. While they're both very fast, I think Cabby is much better on the bases in terms of keeping guys off balance. So me personally, I'd rather get rid of Sam to go get someone. And I definitely don't mind the idea of Snell. I just think that we need to fill more bats than we do arms right now. So I'm going to give this offseason plan a B as well. I think it has some good pieces, but I also think it's missing a lot in terms of the offensive side. So I think that's why I'm going to give it a B. So this next offseason is from Chad. He said, trade Deloach for Isaac Paredes, trade Hancock for Ryan Mountcastle, and sign Jorge Soler. So starting with Deloach for Paredes, I think in order to get Paredes, we're going to need to give up at least one more prospect. If not, maybe throw in some Haggerty type player as well as getting rid of Deloach. 
But I personally like that trade. I am a big Paredes guy myself. I know a lot of Mariner fans aren't and think he won't succeed at T-Mobile, but I think he'd be a perfect fill-in for our third base spot. The next one is Hancock for Ryan Mountcastle. So I like the idea of using Hancock as trade bait as well. And I do like Ryan Mountcastle as well. I think he could be another successful bat in Seattle. My biggest thing is I don't believe Soler, Mountcastle, and France can exist in the same lineup. Ryan Mountcastle is primarily a first baseman, and if he's not going to play first base, he's going to be a DH. And obviously the whole goal of signing Jorge Soler is to put him in the DH spot, not have him play right because he's not very good fielding. So in order for this to work, you'd have to get rid of Ty France because people have flaunted the idea of maybe Ty France playing third base, but we really don't want that. And either way, in this trade, we acquire Paredes. So it kind of defeats the purpose overall. So the main thing I would change about this offseason plan is maybe instead of Ryan Mountcastle, go out and get Anthony Santander, who can play a much better right field than Jorge Soler. So it would look like third base, Isaac Paredes, right field, Anthony Santander, and then DH, Jorge Soler. And then possibly Ken Zone and left as an everyday player. So to me, besides adding more possibly to the Paredes trade and then changing the player from Mountcastle into somebody else, I'm also going to give this offseason plan an A-. minus. So this last offseason plan is my favorite. I think this is the perfect Seattle Mariners offseason plan. So shout out to Yoda Prom for this. He said, sign free agent Jorge Soler, trade Miller plus prospect for a Rosarena and Paredes. As well as you can see in the lineup, he says, sign Robbie Grossman and also sign free agent Sean Manea. So as you can see from that picture, that lineup is stacked. I would be very pleased if that was our opening day lineup. So what this offseason plan does is essentially fills your left field hole, your third base hole, and your DH hole. And since we would get rid of Miller, we'd be filling it with Sean Manea until Robbie Ray comes back. And based on what they want to do with Robbie Ray in terms of innings, it would be possible to run a six-man rotation with Sean Manea and Robbie Ray both in it, which again would switch up the righties and give us two lefties on the mound. And having a veteran like Robbie Grossman behind Canzone, kind of having them fluctuate based on who's hot, I think if we rolled out this lineup, we would definitely be a playoff team without a doubt. So to me, this offseason plan is an A+. If there was a dream offseason plan, to me, this is it. So please let me know down in the comments what you think the best offseason plan in this video was and maybe what your best offseason would look like. So thank you guys for watching the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.